The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because he knew them. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friday was Groundhog Day, and I guess that Punxsutawney Phil, whatever his name is, did not see his shadow, so there are not six more weeks of winter, and given the fact we've had very little winter weather this year, that's pretty much par for the course. Of course, the term Groundhog Day has come to mean repeating the same thing over and over again because of the movie by that name in which Bill Murray plays a weatherman from Punxsutawney who keeps repeating February 2nd over and over and over again. In our reading today from Job, Job seems to be going through a Groundhog Day like that. Every day is the same, and it's not very fun. It's kind of miserable every day. He says, is not man's life on earth a drudgery? My days have become like those of a hireling, someone who works for menial tasks for very little reward, hard labor every day, and nothing ever seems to change. And by this point, you know, Job had lost his health, he had lost his possessions, his family, his friends. He was feeling pretty lonely in his suffering, and he didn't see any hope. He didn't see any light that could possibly come into the darkness. And if the days were bad, the nights were even worse. He says, I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. In my bed, I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. I shall not see happiness again. For Job, every day and every night repeats the same cycle, and he doesn't know, he doesn't see any hope of getting out of it. I wonder if uh, Simon's mother-in-law in the gospel today pretty much felt the same thing. She was sick for many days with a fever, lying in bed. She couldn't get out of bed, and she had that fever for a long time. I can relate, before Christmas, a couple weeks before Christmas, I had a really bad fever for about five days, and I was stuck in bed. I could not get out of bed, even to eat. And, uh, you know, that was, that it wasn't COVID, it wasn't uh, the flu, it was just some sort of viral infection that was going around. You probably had it too, you know, the flu season's been pretty bad this year, and sometimes you say, well, it's just like Groundhog Day, the same thing was true last winter, and then the winter before that, it seems like flu season never comes to an end sometimes. But then something does change, and it's Jesus that shows up. Jesus gets to that village of Capernaum, and he enters the house of Peter's mother-in-law, and he grabs her by the hand and raises her up, and the fever leaves her immediately. Suddenly, where there was only illness and a type of hopelessness in that house, suddenly there is joy and laughter and celebration. She gets up and she puts a meal on for Jesus and for the disciples. They have a party. They call in neighbors and friends. The whole village shows up. And that's the difference that Jesus makes in that one moment. And not just for that household, but for the whole village. I don't think we should underestimate what Uh, how exciting it was for that town for Jesus to show up. It must have been the most exciting thing to ever happen to that town in a day and age when there wasn't a whole lot to distract you, a whole lot of entertainment options. Uh, Every day was about the same, Groundhog Day. We're going to go fish every day. All of a sudden, something new is happening. It was like back in the day when the circus came to town. You know, that was like the only exciting thing that ever happened. And so people showed up to the circus. 
The whole town came. Once a, a circus showed up to town and a man went over to ask the circus owner for a job. And the circus owner said, well, what is it that you do? And he said, well, I do really good bird impressions. And the owner said, well, sorry, we already have someone who does that. Oh, that's, that's okay, said the man. He, he sadly went away and flew out of the tent. <laughs> the difference that Jesus makes is really amazing. You know, Jesus makes this incredible difference. It's no longer Groundhog Day. Something new is happening in our life. And he is doing all these remarkable things. He, he's walking on water. He's calming a storm. He's feeding 5,000 people. He's curing a leper. He's driving out demons. It goes on and on. And he's speaking with an authority that we've never heard before. He's telling us things about God that we never knew. What an amazing uh, opportunity that must have been. It, it was Groundhog Day no longer. It was something exciting happening. You know, February 2nd is not just Groundhog Day. In the church, it's the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. 40 days after Christmas, af uh, after December 25th, is February 2nd. And that's the day we remember how Jesus, when he was 40 days old, was brought to the temple by Mary and Joseph and presented to the Lord in the temple. And there were those two ancient prophets, Simeon and Anna, who see the baby Jesus and take him into their arms, and they're filled with joy. They said, we've been waiting for 80 or 90 years here in our life, and things have become a bit of a drudgery. It seemed like the same thing was happening every day, and all this, but we knew that God had promised us we will not see death until something new happens. And here he is. And Simeon says, now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation that you promised, a light of revelation to the world. Because Simeon calls Jesus the light of the world, that's why February 2nd is also sometimes called Candlemas. It's the day that we bless the candles in the church, representing the light of Christ in our world. And uh, it, there's a sort of a tradition that grew up that, uh, at, on the day after you bless the candles, on February 3rd, the Feast of St. Blaise, you use those blessed candles to bless throats and to pray for healing from illness. I always think that the blessing of the throats comes way too late in flu season. It would have been nicer if have done this two months ago. Maybe I wouldn't have had that fever. But, you know, maybe we've gotten to the point finally where we say, God, we've had enough of this. We need your healing. And maybe Job felt that way. Maybe Simon Peter's mother-in-law felt that way. God, couldn't you have done something earlier to heal us? Why do we have to go through all those days of drudgery? It's Job especially, why didn't you show up, Lord, when my life was crashing around me? But there's something in the Christian mystery, the Christian life, that those days of drudgery matter. And sometimes those are the days that bring us healing as we trust in the Lord, as we wait on the Lord during those days, trusting that he knows the right time for our healing. And if we pick up our cross every day and follow Jesus, we will get to the glory of the resurrection. I think the church is very wise to give us all these different feasts and fast days and seasons throughout the year. You know, because otherwise every day would be the same. Every day would be Groundhog Day, just the same thing every day. It's good to have something to shake us up a little bit. Just like Jesus shook up the people in Capernaum. Wake up, something new is happening. We need that from time to time. The church shakes us up and say, hey, do something different here. Get, let's get out of our complacency, out of our laziness, out of our, let's, let's do something else. And of course, the next big season coming up in the church is the season of Lent, starting in just a couple weeks. As we prepare for Easter, for our great celebration of the resurrection, Easter is the greatest feast we have. So we prepare well for the whole season of fasting, of returning to the Lord with our whole hearts. There was a Catholic school teacher who said to her class, now, boys and girls, Easter is coming up quickly. We need to prepare. And, and you know what Easter is, right? And one little boy raised his hand and he said, yes, teacher, he, Easter, that's the day that uh, the stone was rolled away and Jesus came out of his cave. And if he sees his shadow, there are six more weeks of winter. No, he, he was mixing up a little bit there. We can mix up these seasons. Don't mix up Lent, though. Lent is so important. It's the day every, it's the season every year where God shakes us up a little bit. That's why we give up something for Lent. 
It, it, it's not because it has to be a huge sacrifice necessarily, but it's just do something different in your life. So we don't just keep falling back to the same bad habits, the same sins that we always fall back into. Move, change, grow, do something. In next week in the bulletin, you'll see all the opportunities we have in the parish to grow during Lent. And we have all sorts of things, Stations of the Cross and on Fridays. We're going to be having a soup and bread meal a couple of weeks before the stations on Fridays here at St. Mary's. And we have some weekend retreats coming up for men and women. But the thing I really want to highlight is that during the season of Lent this year, we're going to be doing some, watching something called The Chosen. The Chosen is a television show that is about Jesus and the first disciples. And you see how the difference Jesus made for those first followers in Capernaum and elsewhere. And just the huge difference Jesus made in their life. And you know, at first, I, I wasn't sure about this show. I said, do we really need another entertainment option? Do we really need another show to binge watch, like on Netflix? And you know, when, every, when the circus comes to town every day, when you're constantly entertained, like nothing's exciting anymore. But then I watched some clips of this show, and it, it's beautiful. You see Jesus encountering the woman at the well, and Jesus he healing the paralytic. It's very well done. And so we're just going to be watching an episode a week during Lent and discussing afterwards. And I hope that's an opportunity for us to encounter Christ in a new way, Jesus in a new way through a work of art and imagination. But whether it's the chosen or something else, do something. Allow God to shake you up a little bit. Allow Jesus to maybe get you out of your comfort zone. Do something that gets you out of your comfort zone. Because we don't celebrate Groundhog Day as a church. You know, we don't just go through the same motions every day. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. And every day, we open ourselves up, as the church invites us to, to a new encounter with Jesus Christ, a new encounter with this man who can change our lives, just as he changed the life of those first disciples.